when you're playing video games, you get killed or sometimes, you know, like you're about to die and you're going to have to, you know, give up. Like you just restart. You just start from the beginning, right? You start a hundred people on the map and you keep going back in and you just kind of hit pause and go down, restart. Let's do it in the next round. See, don't you wish you had that in life? All right, guys, so we did it. We are officially done with the Be Encouraged booklet. We finished our daily devotional uh, on Wednesday through Titus chapter 3, right, five days a week. And I hope you guys kept on reading your Bibles and got deeper into your word. Don't just give up. Be like, you know what? I finished the book. I'm done. Because that's not what I did when I first got saved, when I first started reading the Bible. My, If you've heard my testimony before, right, my friend asked me to read the book of John. And then I finished it, and I didn't just say, cool, now I know the Bible, and I gave up. No, I said, okay, what do I do next? I turned the next page, I went on to, um, I went on to Acts, and I kept reading. And so, um, I encourage you guys to keep doing that. If you don't know where to go, just go to Philemon, Hebrews, um, and then, uh, or if you want to go backwards and, and go read a gospel, go read John, it's a great book. We'll probably be going through that. Uh, soon, if you're in fifth grade and uh, if you guys are in sixth grade, you know, you guys will be getting the chance to study the entire Bible with Pastor RJ, uh, New Testament, and he's super excited for that. So um, I hope, you know, that you, what you guys learned from this book, it, booklet isn't only, you know, the, the, the truths that are in it, which are so powerful and so amazing, but also what I really wanted to show you guys with this tool, which is really all it is, because I didn't write this, God gave the words I just put it in a booklet so that you guys can journal but what I hope you guys learned from that is it's it's not impossible to um, spend time with God there is enough time in the day it is possible for you personally to dig into the word and for God to speak directly into you because if if you always just rely on me I mean I only spoke to you guys three to four times a week through, through Titus but God can speak to you every single day through the word. And so I really hope that you guys were encouraged by that. I hope you guys keep that thirst, that that desire for God, for um, his, uh, his word, and let it continuously bless you. And so I'm super honored to get to share this message with you guys, to record this, to you know edit the videos. I've had so much fun doing it, and I've been super encouraged that you guys are watching it. So I also encourage you guys, if there's someone that um, hasn't been connected with the five six a lot or hasn't been connected with the church send them this video or you know reach out to them I invite them to our Tuesday game nights that's what those are for you know for for people to be comfortable and get to know each other and get to hang out and fellowship and those have been a lot of fun uh, our discipleships are still going going strong every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. guys uh, you know some of the leaders have been showing up and it's been super cool Miss Rebecca's running the girls group and they've been super blessed by that and going through the book so um, I've really been blessed by what we've been doing and so now we get to dive into the word a little bit so we're gonna be closing out um, Hebrews or sorry Hebrews we're gonna be closing out Titus chapter 3 and so I'm gonna go through the entire book but uh, I'm gonna kind of take it back and we're gonna have not just three points that you guys are gonna write down but three main points and so with a couple of sub points so I'm super excited for this lesson uh, I was really blessed to sit down and just kind of dissect this a little bit um, and so uh, let's go ahead and jump in uh, during this time you know we've been so during this time we've been doing something um maybe not me so much because I'm not a big person but there's been a particular thing that's been in our hand maybe even more than this or maybe even more than this it's been this maybe this thing has been in your hand more often and this isn't a bad thing, it's a remote control, it's a tool to be used to play video games. Which isn't bad, some of them could be. Time waster? Sure. I don't play a lot of them, but I'm sure a lot of you guys have. And so that's what we're kind of going to be looking at today. We're going to be looking at this thing that you're so used to um, having in your hand. And so what we're going to kind of be talking about is, I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips to be an awesome gamer. But in reality, I'm going to give you guys tips to be an awesome disciple of Jesus because that's truly what's important. So let's go ahead and get started with our lesson.
by doing one simple thing that we all like to do, which is tap to start. So let's start. Um, so we're going to start by just jumping right into the uh, Word of God itself. And we're going to be looking at my first point, which is to be a humble beast, right? Be a humble beast. And so the reason I titled it, this point is about this is because when you're playing video games if you're this oh I'm best I'm, I'm pumped up and you're super you know um, like I'm better than everybody and then you get killed or you get beat or you lose a round or whatever then you're kind of like put in shame and everyone makes fun of you and it, and it feels bad but if you're a humble beast where you are good at your craft and you are good at what you're doing but also you have a humility of, of I can be beat I'm not the best in the world or I'm you know um, I it's possible for me to be beat and you have that mindset and that reality of, of your experience then you know you're, you're, you're funner to play with you are have a better energy and so uh, that's in video games but let's look at what the Word of God so we're gonna read Titus uh, chapter 3, and we're just going to read verses 1 through 3 and look at, see what it looks like as a disciple of Christ to be a humble beast. Okay, Titus chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, it says, uh, Remind the believers to submit to the gover government and its officers. They should be obedient, always ready to do good. They must not slander anyone, and they must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. Some people? No. Everyone. Verse 3. Once we too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil, envy, and we hated each other and so uh right when we're looking at this being a humble beast right he's paul he's talking he's he's jumping this chapter off with okay submit to the governing authorities which right now for me has been a really hard thing it's like i can't see my friends i can't see my disciples i can't see the people the lord has given me to shepherd over like i can't shepherd physically the sheep you have given me god and and i look at the governing officials and i'm like why not why won't you let me? And I get, you know, the safeties and the precautions, but there's still this, like, rebelliousness in me. This, well, I, I, I want to do it because this is what God has called me to do and this is what's important and, and I don't think this is right. And, and I get so rebellious, but I got to remember, God says, hey, submit. Honor the authorities. No authority comes from anyone except through God. That's what Jesus said. And so I, I, I read this because I was getting really worked up one day. And the next day, God spoke this to me. And I was like, oh, my goodness, amen. So I need to submit. And so we need to be submitted to the authorities and, and the officers. And we need to be walking in obedience at all times. And so when we're talking about this concept of being a humble beast and we're talking about uh, um, you know, getting and being a humble beast of God's word, of, of being a disciple of Jesus, right, we want to, um, the, the first thing that we need to do and, and take note of is we need to actually seek humility and not rebellion, right? So easy, so often when there's a decision we don't like or it's a decision we don't agree with, we turn to rebellion. We turn to fighting against it. We turn to, you know, coming up with clever ideas, different situations, or, you know, um, starting protests and all these different things. But that's not what he's telling us to do. See, I love what he says that he says, um, he said they must not slander anyone and they must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be uh, gentle and show humility to everyone. See, when we say I'm right, you're wrong. When um, I'm correct, you're wrong. You're, you're, or, I'm smart, you're dumb. When we say that to the government, well, it's like that's not showing humility. That's not... Uh, being gentle, that's being prideful, that's being arrogant, that's being puffed up. And so we need to be seeking after humility of saying, understand that, yes, God put these people in the role. Now, I'm not saying let them take advantage of you and you don't speak up, but I'm saying is understand that God put the authorities over you and that you should respect them, you should honor them, and you should seek humility and say, you know what, they aren't above me and I'm going to submit to them. That's humility, not rebellion, which is no, I'm right. That's rebellion. That's pride. That's not what God has for us. 
See, and another way to be a humble beast and to not only just be humble and, and submissive, but also to excel and to be that beast mode, to be that next level, to get that W per se, right? He, he, he gives another quick tip. He says in verse 3, he says, once uh, we too were foolish and disobedient, we were raised and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy and we hated each other. So basically what Paul is talking about here, he says, this was me. He says, I was not a humble beast. I was just a beast. I was not a good person. I was a person who gave into his sin, who gave into his lust, who gave into his self pleasures, who gave into what he wanted. He says, and I was chained to that, and I was stuck in this bondage of slavery to sin. See, and so he 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 gives this personal like, I was there. You don't want to be there. Don't be a slave to sin. And so this, this next point that I put is listen to your elders, right? This keeps us in that humble position of, yeah, people are above me, right? When we listen to our elders, but also when we listen to the people who have gone before us, we realize that there's a lot of challenges in this world. There's a lot of difficult things and, and we need help in them. See, I love what Proverbs 19.20 says. I'm going to actually go ahead and turn there in the Bible. Um, 16, 18, Proverbs 19, verse 20 says, get all the advice and the instruction you can so you will be wise and the rest of your life. I'm going to read that again. Get all the advice and instruction you can so you will be wise the rest of your life, right? He says, seek after that instruction and you will be wise and seek after that humility and you will be a humble beast. That is what God has for us. That is what God wants us to be in, in this mindset. And we're trying to get that W. We're trying to be victorious. We're trying to finish the race. We're trying to finish the game. And we want to be victorious. And we're trying to finish life well. And we need to seek that wisdom and guidance because Paul's offering that here. Listen to your parents because they've probably made a lot of mistakes. Ask your parents, what what was one of their biggest mistakes? What was a biggest lesson they learned? And honestly, if you listen to them, they probably made much worse mistakes than you may imagine. But they learned from it. They grew from it. And now they have wisdom and knowledge that you may not have, that you don't have access to because of your youth, because of your young age, right? Be a humble beast and listen to your elders and listen to the advice because that's what Paul said. He's like, I was messed up, but look at how God has transformed me, which brings me now to my second point, right? We're talking about video games. We're talking about um, when, we're, when we're playing a video game, right? Uh, biggest one right now is Fortnite. I, I think it's Fortnite. I don't know. I don't play video games. But another thing is like when you're playing video games, you get killed or sometimes you know like you're about to die and you're gonna have to you know give up like you just restart you just start from the beginning right you start a hundred people on the map and you keep going back in and you just kind of hit pause and go down restart let's do it in the next round see don't you wish you had that in life don't you sometimes wish that you could just press pause scroll down a few restart have the whole round start over, redo that again, and that way you can do it right. That way you can press forward. See, the really cool thing is that option, that restart button, that just restarting is actually a possibility. See, let's look at what he says in Titus chapter 3, right? Paul writing to Titus, right? In, in um, Let's read verses, now we're going to read verses 4 through uh, 8. He says this, but, right, there's a but there, so you got to pay attention. It says, but when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we, he, uh, we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sin, giving us a new birth, a new life through the Holy Spirit. He generate. He generously pours out his spirit upon us through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Verse 7, because of his grace, he declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we would inherit eternal life. Verse 8, this is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to 
insist on these teachings so that all who trust in God will devote themselves to doing good. These teachings are good and beneficial for everyone. I love how he keeps making these bold statements of for everyone, right? And so he, what he's talking about here is he lays out the gospel so clearly for Titus, which Paul actually does a lot here. See, that restart button that we wish that we had, that control that we wish we had, is was made available to us by Jesus, was made available to us by the cross. When Jesus, he came and he poured out his life, when he poured out his blood, when he died a criminal's death, when he took your place on the cross, that you may have eternal life, that you may be cleaned, that you may be wiped clean, that you may restart, that you may fix your errors, that you may fix your mistakes, that you may have that new, that second chance to restart and press forward. In Christ, he gave you that restart option when he he died on the cross, right? We just restart. And what, what I want you to write down is remember this significant, important statement that Paul's saying here. Christ gives us a new life, right? God, our Savior, he revealed his love to us on that cross, right? He revealed his kindness and love. And, and he, he talks about that this restart option. When you restart a video game, you don't have to go back and redo the whole code. You press pause, you scroll down, you press restart, and it always asks you, are you sure you want to restart? Yes. Right? And so, uh, with you don't really do a lot of work. You just press a couple buttons, you just accept it. That's just like Jesus. He, he talks about there's not a lot of work. There's no work you can do to earn it. There's nothing that you could do to earn that restart, to earn that righteousness, to earn that eternal life, but that new life that Christ offers us. But he says God gives it to us. This is a gift from Jesus. And he, he, he has given us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. Right? And this is when we get into um, a really important topic that I think... I neglect so much that other Bible teachers neglect much is it's the Holy Spirit, right? We we talk about God the Father, the almighty, powerful creator of the universe, right? God the Father. We talk about God the Son. We talk about our Savior who came, God in flesh and died and rose again to give us eternal life. But so often we neglect the third person of God, the Holy Spirit, right? A couple weeks ago, I talked about how the misconception that the Holy Spirit is an it, and like the force. No, the Holy Spirit is a he, like a person, a person of God, God himself, who indwells us, who comes into our lives. See, he talks about this in verses six through eight. He says, God generously pours out his spirit into our lives. And so that, and he does that through Christ Jesus, our savior right? He, he, he generously pours out his spirit. See, uh, there's this verse I want to take you guys to. It's, um, ver Luke. So if, um, main sanctuary, they've been going through Luke. And so hopefully you guys know where that is, but it's the gospel of Luke. It is the third book in the new Testament. And so in the gospel of Luke chapter 11, where are you? There we go. Chapter 11, verse 13, right? Jesus, he lays this out so clearly about receiving that power into himself. Because mind you, this Holy Spirit, this is the same power that was in Christ. This is the same power that gave Jesus the authority to teach. This is the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, right? And God, he says that God generously pours that out to you. Right? He gives you an abundance. He doesn't just give you a little bit. And so let's look at what Jesus said in Luke 11, verse 13. Luke 11, verse 13. If you sinful people know how to give good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? He says, ask. Pray to God, which is my next point. Ask God for the Holy Spirit, Luke eleven thirteen. God is offering you great and mighty power. He is offering you himself to dwell inside of you. And he says, all you got to do is ask and pray. See, and getting back to that point where it says that God gives his spirit generously, getting back to that point that God gives his spirit generously, right? I have right here uh, one of my favorite 
drinks, pink lemonade, strawberry lemonade, can't go wrong with it, right? And sometimes, you know, we think when we come to Christ, we get that emptiness, that restart. But that's the amazing thing about that restart life. We don't just get a restart and then we do it all over again. Because in all reality, if we got a restart and we are just like, okay, now we do life again, we would make the same mistakes. We would make the same sins. But God says, no, I'm not just giving you a, a start over. I'm giving you a new life. He says, you became an empty vessel, like this empty cup. He says, now I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. He doesn't just say, I'm going to give you a little bit of my Holy Spirit. He says, no, I'm going to give you generously my Holy Spirit. I'm going to fill you. And what's so amazing is I'm not going to overflow this because I don't want to make a mess and have to clean up a sticky floor. But he says, I give my spirit to you so generously, so abundantly that you may overflow. And that's what's so amazing is living as a disciple is that we receive the spirit and we receive so much of the spirit that we overflow and that we can now be poured out into other people and that that's how ministry happens is we bless other people through what God has done through us. Right? And he goes on and talking about this and to, to Titus because he says, use these words, use the spirit that God has given you, and now pour that into someone else and do that through teaching. See, that's my gifting is as God has given me and it overflows the Holy Spirit that's inside my life through the gift of teaching. But to you, that might not be that. It might be love, compassion, generosity, making cookies and giving it to a friend, giving it to a neighbor, to showing them that Jesus loves them. These simple things, but it, it furthers the kingdom because we're full of the Spirit. We're full of the power and boldness to go out there and be his disciples who go and make Jesus known on this world and show the world that we are followers of him. Which which brings me to the last point because that's hard. That's scary, but the good news is that Jesus gives us the strength. Jesus gives us the power. Jesus is the one who fills our cup. Yeah, I'm going to drink it because I like pink lemonade. Jesus is the one who fills our cup. And going back to that video game analogy, sometimes when we're playing video games, man, it, it, it's so easy. The other day I was playing Madden. Again, your boy is terrible at video games. And I was playing and I was getting my butt kicked. It was like, it was like 26 to, to 6. And I was getting destroyed. So what did I do? I press start. And I go all the way past the restart button and go to quit game. And I'm like, I can't take this anymore. I'm going to lose. There's no way I can do this. I just, I, I give up. I just, it, we call that rage quit, right? Have you ever seen someone do that when you're playing online? And they just get super mad at a video game. Some people throw their controllers. Some people just freak out and they, and they rage quit, right? And they have, they can't control their anger. They can't control what they say. And it, it just, it looks bad. Right? And you rage quit and you just back up and you give up and you just, you, you're done. You, you're, you're over it and you just give up. But no, that brings us to our last point. Don't rage quit. Don't just give up. Don't just give in to how you feel and what you want to do. But there's actually um, a godliness that we are supposed to act as disciples of Jesus. So let's look at what Paul says to Timothy through verses 9 through 15. Sorry, not Timothy, Titus. Uh, verse 9, he says, Don't get involved with foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels of fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. If people are causing division amongst you, uh, give a first and second warning. After that, have nothing to do with them. Have nothing more to do with them. For people like this have turned away from the truth and their own sins condemn them. I, verse 12, I am planning to send either Artemis or Ty uh, Tachicus to you as soon as one of them arrives. Do your best to, need, to meet me in Nicopolis, for I've decided to stay there during the winter. Do everything you can to help Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their trip. See that they are given everything they need. Verse 14, our people must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others. Then they will not be unproductive. Verse 15, everybody here sends greetings. Please give my greetings to all believers, all who love us. May God's grace be 
with all of you. Wow, what a powerful way to close this book, right? I mean, he's talking about don't rage quit. See, the first thing that happens in a rage quit is the rage. And so the way that we avoid a rage quit though, is the way we avoid not a rage quit in the video game, but in life, in following Jesus and being his disciple is we don't rage, right? He talks about, he says, don't get involved in those those pointless discussions, those useless discussions. He, it's just, what he's basically saying is be careful what you say. Practice self-control. Be careful what you say because sometimes we get so wrapped up into our conversations and to our distractions and we're trying to deal with other people. We're trying to deal with brothers and sisters. And if you have biological brothers and sisters, you know how hard that is. But also spiritual brothers and sisters, there's those same fights and debates and arguments and people, they go back and forth. And he's saying, don't get wrapped up in that. There's so many things that people like to debate and argue and think and say, what's your opinion? What do you think? And they want to argue with you. He's saying, no, 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 that's not productive. Those fights, those oral, those quarrels, those arguments, that's not, they're, they're just a useless waste of time much like video games, but we're not getting there, right? But he's saying, don't get into those arguments. Don't get into those. If people are po poking your buttons, if people are just trying to get you upset, don't give in to that. But it said, walk by the Holy Spirit. Pray for that power. Pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon you, that you may have peace, that you don't rage quit and give up. See, another thing that's interesting about this, though, is because there's going to be a lot of people like that. Like, if you're a younger sibling, you know how to press buttons. I'm a younger sibling. I know how to get my brother mad in two seconds, probably with four words if I wanted to, right? When I was younger, I was the best at it. And there's people in our lives like that today who like to press buttons, who like to see what they can do to upset us, to, to um, get us to be mad, to get us to rage quit. And what he's saying is be patient with troublemakers. Be patient with troublemakers. Oh my goodness, aren't there troublemakers everywhere? The troublemakers are out there. See, he says, if people are causing these devotions, he says, if there's people who are causing this division and separation, he says, okay, give them a warning the first time. Hey, you know, this isn't something I'm interested in really debating. This is actually something that's going to make us farther apart than bring us together as the body of Christ. I don't think we should talk about that you should stop bringing this up. It's it's not beneficial to the body. Hopefully he goes, okay, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. He, then he says, okay, now if a second time they bring this up and it's something that's splitting people apart and separating them instead of uniting them as the body of Christ, then you come up to him again and be like, hey, you said you weren't going to do it again. You did it again. I don't want to have to warn you again. Please, you're dividing people. We want to be united as the body of Christ. Please don't do that again. He does it a third time, and he's just like, you know what? Wash your hands of him. That, that's like a symbol of, I don't have anything to do with this, right? Be like, you know what? I'm done. I warned you twice. Don't talk to me. I'm not interested in this discussion. And be patient. But that takes a lot of patience. For someone to bring up an argument three different times saying the exact same thing, it's like, <sighs> but it's hard. It's that challenging. Again, God didn't just give us a new life. He gave us the strength and the ability to overcome. He gives us his power. He gives us his spirit, right? And we need to constantly be in prayer, seeking God, just asking God for the Holy Spirit because he is a good father and he wants to give us that power and he wants to give us that spirit. Right, which brings me to my last point. It's not going to be up on the screen, but it says, it brings me to the last thing I want to talk about, which is verse 14. And I'm going to read it to you guys. It says, our people must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others. Then they will not be unproductive, right? When Paul is closing out his letter, he's saying, hey, help this guy, help him. Oh, come visit me. I'm going to be over here uh, in this. Uh, he's going to be, not Zenas, Paulos. Uh, he says, I'm going to be in Nicopolis for the winter. Come see me. I'd love to see you. And he's saying all these different things, but he closes it off with, you know, make sure that people learn to do good by meeting the needs of of others, meeting the urgent need of, needs of other. What, 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 what application for our time now? Because you know, people they might not be able to go to the store. People um, might need a phone call. Uh, the loneliness, the the depression, the the 
emotions that people have been feeling right now, there are needs of people. And sometimes a simple phone call goes such a long way that will bless and minister to somebody, right? Or someone next door might just need to know they love them. A handwritten letter. Um, maybe you can get their, uh, you can go, you can ask your mom if you can get their groceries for them. You can help them in different ways, right? Meeting the urgent needs because in all reality, it's going back to the video games. If this is the only thing you're doing, you're being unproductive. It's fine. It's not bad, but it's not productive. There's not a benefit to spending a lot of time with this in your hand. But if we want to be productive, we look at others. How can we bless another person? How can we be a productive person? Is we need to be keeping our minds off the, keeping our eyes off the screen and putting our eyes on other people and seeing how can I bless them? How can I help them? How can I be a disciple of Christ? What would Jesus do? How would Jesus serve this person? And what gifts has He given me? God has given you His Spirit. God has given you a restart. God has given you the strength to bless and minister to people. May your cup overflow. May you be so intact and so surrendered to Jesus that you can't help but overflow the spirit of love and patience, endurance, and, and, and all these things that we talked about. Because you can't do it on your own. On your own, you're an empty vessel, but God gives you his spirit. So seek that spirit. Seek after Christ. Seek that forgiveness. Seek that restart. And be filled that you may be a disciple of Jesus led by his spirit. Hi there. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like the video. Only if you want to. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for all our new updates. God bless you.